Hey, if you were watching yesterday, McElroy hits this nasty push slice off the tee way into the woods at Augusta. And it almost cost him the tournament in terms of missing the cut, which would have been quite unfortunate. But this is something I really want to talk about downswing wise and how it's affecting or could be affecting your swing and also affecting his swing. It's something rather dangerous, dangerous in a golf way. The path of the club on the downswing for McElroy, he puts himself in push slice territory in the downswing. Great player, he's really long off the tee, he hits a lot of fairways, but there's one costly part of his swing that could be the reason why he misses or almost missed the cut. So when we look at how the club should approach the ball in the downswing, I've got Scheffler on the right. Scheffler is an example of somebody who swings with a much more neutral path, and Rory has a little bit more of an into-out swing path. And we'll be looking at the difference between those paths right here. As you see, Rory approach the downswing. There's this move at the top. He does a sit-down type move. And when he does this, this is lowering the club in the downswing. And when he's lowering that club, the club is swinging more out to the right. So a bigger into out swing path. You have to be worried about swinging too much out to the right as a golfer. You know, a lot of better players struggle with this miss. You start swinging too much out to the right, the ball is beelining left, big hooks or big pushes. And it depends on where that club face points at impact. If that face gets too open to the path, it's going to be push slice all day long. So as McElroy approaches the ball here, and something I want you watching his swing while he's playing this week. His club should go on a direct line to the ball, going back on this red line to the ball. So that's the most efficient path. That would be like a zero path to the ball, a very straight shot. If he gets the club anywhere underneath this line, it becomes more into out. So watch as he approaches impact here. There's the club, it's under too much. And as it's approaching impact, it's actually quite a bit low. So this would tell me he's swinging a lot more out to the right than he should be. This is block territory for a lot of you golfers. Now McElroy in this shot is probably hitting a big draw. But one of the reasons he's able to be consistent with this amount of into out swing path is he sets up for a fade. So you look at his setup, he's got the hands a little bit more back. The hands are not too far forward. So having the handle back reduces the effect of the into-out swing path. But it doesn't eliminate this issue entirely because if he gets too under, ball's going push slice or it's hooking. I've played some great golf with the handle back because I used to have a similar swing problem or swing issue like McElroy here where I get too under. And it enabled me to hit a straight shot to a slight fade just by having the handle back because it eliminated the possibility of me hooking the ball. It also led to me hitting a higher shot. But let's contrast this with somebody like Scheffler. You'll see when he gets into the downswing, the path differences are huge here. Look at how the shaft and the club head are a little bit higher than the right arm. So with McElroy, you've got the shaft and the club head through the right arm, which I love, but then you see the club go well under, down, way down. Scheffler, on the other hand, has a shaft above the right arm, but you're going to see the club do something different. The club's going to go on a path directly to the ball. So this is almost a zero swing path, enables you to hit a very straight shot, or in his case, you know, it's zero to slightly across, so he's hitting a cut. The difference between these paths, look at this one. Let's go back to drawing that lovely little line. Versus Scheffler. So there's the lines. Scheffler's above. And there's McElroy. He's on. Now McElroy's under. Scheffler's staying on that red line all the way down into the ball. So that's about zero. 
before somebody says these are different camera angles, I could go back to setup and you look at their shoulder lines, they're about the same. So they're set up for the same swing direction. It's not about the feet, it's about the shoulders here. So that's the path of Scheffler. It's a little bit steeper and zeroed. And the path of McElroy is under and out to the right more. And if I find myself in that territory, look how low that club is to the ground for impact versus Scheffler. You know, McElroy's somewhere over here, closer to the right leg. And that's much more into out. So what's this mean for you? How, what, what's the deal? Well, when you're doing your downswing, pay attention to the path of the club and try and avoid getting too under. Because it's so tempting for a lot of golfers. to see golfers going down the path of trying to hit the ball by tilting, doing a lot of side bend. I'll show you what I want to see. What I would recommend, if you really want to rip the ball, if you want to rip it straight, and not to deal with any nonsensical push slices, because I've been there. I've been there. Scheffler, right back to the ball. Zero path. McElroy, more, you get to the top and you see this, this lower move. Right there, it's getting more into out. And it's way out to the right. Then I've got a I've got to do a little subtle releasing of the wrist because the handle's back at setup. I've got to do a little bit of this in impact to prevent the ball from hooking. And so what I would have golfers do, instead of starting your downswing by trying to do any excessive tilting like this, that's going more into out, more out to the right. And in my Segudo.golf online golf school, I show golfers you don't hit the ball by tilting away. We hit the ball by using the shoulders and keeping our relationship to the ground. Right here, path is zero. You can't do anything if your power doesn't mean jack squat if you're not hitting it in play. Power also doesn't mean jack, it doesn't mean anything to you if you're not hitting it solid. You won't hit it very solid doing this unless you have some compensations to make, like setting up with the handle back. And once again, with irons, you know, you watch Macor with irons, he does a little bit different setup with the irons. He's got a handle ahead, weight forward. And he stays over the ball with the irons more. So his spine's more vertical, staying over the ball all the way throughout the entire downswing. This enables him to take a divot after the ball, strike it extremely crispy, and his path with the irons is much more zero. It's zeroed in, it's a tighter ball flight. So the driver, he makes this one difference. I would focus on trying to stay over the ball the entire way down. Swing your shoulders, stay over it. Don't try and tilt. Don't try and magically lower your body because that's just going to cause path issues. And when you have path issues like excessive into out swing path, you're looking at the club getting lower to the ground and the lower it gets. That's Chunkland, Chunksville, one way ticket. That's Pushville. Hookville, Miseryville. It's the opposite of the slice, but slice is still bad. So you got to keep your path in a range. Not too under, not too across, but thinking more like Scheffler terms, zeroing that path so that you can have the straightest shot, the crispiest shot, and you'll have this just minimal deviation in your ball flight. So next time you go out and play, think about where that club's approaching from. McElroy will fight this tendency. He's found a way to make this work for him. Obviously, it works well for him off the tee. He hits the ball a really long way. Notice how he changes it up with his irons. That's a pretty big difference with the irons, his setup with the irons. Probably get into that in a future episode. But if he wanted to rip it straight, I would have him get more into a position closer to Scheffler's where the club's going on a direct path to the ball instead of getting so under. So that way he can hit a straighter ball without seeing, without having to change his swing or without having to change his setup. But uh, we'll see what happens. That's one way he can avoid that push slice miss. Of course, you know the pressure of playing at Augusta 
and trying to make the cut does add into, does get factored into that. Something to consider and think about how it affects your swing.